That yeah. was, I'm very much against it. Again, if you want to YouTube, YouTube Angus King Energy Committee Keystone, and you'll get an earful of my position on Keystone. So I'm, I'm against it, but I'm for open debate in the United States Senate, which we haven't had a much enough of lately. So. Thank you. Will, will you continue to support, uh, uh, to vote against the Keystone Pipeline? Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you notice I reached into my pocket. In my, in, yeah, can, yes, ma'am. Let me just finish, okay? Um, I carry in my pocket all the time. In fact, I handed one of these to one of those Republicans during the State of the Union, when the president was talking about climate change. It's a little card. I've got a whole bunch of them. Um, I actually pulled one of these out on the Bill Maher show a couple of weeks ago. It's called, I call it climate change in a nutshell. I had these made. And on this side is a million years of CO2 in the atmosphere. And what it shows is, you see these lines, it sort of jiggles around between 250 and 300 parts per million for a million years. And then it goes to 1860, when we started burning stuff, and it goes up. It goes up to, to 400 parts per million. It has, we haven't had 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere for 3 million years. And the last time we had 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, the oceans were 60 feet higher. That's history. That's just science. And then, so you look at the, to me, this chart itself answers two questions. Two of the three basic questions about climate change. One is, is something happening? Yes. You hear people say, well, in fact, Jim Inhofe was on the floor yesterday with a chart. You know how far his chart went back? A thousand years. I was going to go back on the, on the floor and say, Jim, I see your thousand. I'll raise you 999,000. <laughs> but what this says, people say, well, his, you know, it varies. Of course it varies. Yes, it varies. You can see that it varies. But not this much. This is new. The other thing this tells you is, do people have anything to do with it? Do you think it happened in 1860, 1870, when we started burning stuff in a big way? By coincidence? I don't think so. So the, the third question is, so what? What does CO2 in the atmosphere do? That's when you turn the card over. <laughs> On the back, what I have is the relationship for a million years between CO2 and temperature. And you can't see it, but it's almost an exact correlation. CO2 goes up, temperature goes up. CO2 goes down, temperature goes down. There's no, uh, I mean, it, it, it just, they just overlay one another. So to me, that, that's why I call this climate change in a nutshell. I handed one of these to Inhofe the other day. He looked at it, he looked at it and tucked it into his pocket, and I haven't heard from him since. But, <laughs> uh, but yes, and the answer to your question is yes. And why am I against it? I thought a lot about it. I mean, it's an infrastructure project, but my, my, my end point was, a, it's a backward-looking energy policy. It looks back toward fossil fuel, and we ought to be looking forward. Number two, it would facilitate the development of some of the dirtiest oil in the world. I say facilitate because one of the things I learned in my research is the reason they want to build the pipeline is it's cheaper to put oil through a pipeline than it is to put it on trains, trucks, or barges. So it literally makes the oil cheaper. Uh, that oil, it makes it more economic, com more economic and more economically competitive. So it will, I believe, facilitate the development of the oil. And then I learned, you know how many jobs this project will create? Permanent jobs? It'll create a lot of construction jobs. You know how many permanent jobs? 35. I was in the Energy Committee. John Hoven, the big advocate for it, was sitting right across from me. He's from North Dakota. I looked across and said, John, I can build a McDonald's in Fargo that'll create more jobs in this project. <laughs>